Hey guys, this is Joe East here. This is um, a continuation on our discussion of artificial intelligence. So let's uh, continue on the language concept, and we're going. Once we get to the end of this, you'll understand where I'm headed. So let's consider Western languages, the way they're structured in general, and how we have to put in certain things in there for exceptions to these rules. But in general, the rule is subject verb, object. And some of the most fleshed out languages with a subject verb object is uh, French, English, and uh, German. Uh, you get to, to languages approaching Spanish, then it gets a little bit more abstract, and I'll point that out to you here. Also, you'll see slightly. And then you get to some of the Eastern languages, then it gets even more abstract, where subject verb object is not necessary in some cases, and sometimes they do it differently. Okay, so if you speak English, French, German, uh, Spanish is in that same category, but less so, you're gonna uh, be very um, accustomed to thinking in terms of subject, verb, object, and the way your language forms your brain, uh, forms your way of thinking, and your way of thinking determines how you act, uh, very much so. So, for example, English, I go to the store. Okay, subject, verb, object. Now, the object itself, we have a bunch of prepositions and articles, but we still have the object there. Some languages take all the prepositions and articles, combine them into a form of one word. Russian is an example, Latin is an example, and Greek is an example, where they sometimes take these three words and form them into one word. They don't need the three words for this category. Um, let's just go to French. Uh, je vais au marché, or je vais au marché if you're into uh, the Cajun dialect is the second form. Um, now let's step to Spanish, which takes the subject and the verb and combines it because the form of the verb assumes this subject. Voy a la tienda. Voy a la tienda. I go to the store in Spanish. So the subject is contained in the form of the verb. Again, some of the Eastern languages, there's a heck of a lot contained in the form of the noun, verb, all this stuff. Uh, so just in the little section of three Western languages, English, French, and Spanish, we see subject, verb, object, but then we see a little bit of abstraction just when we go to Spanish, which is a Western language, okay? Whereas French and English are more very uh, uh, detailed uh, language where you can break things into pieces and analyze very well, okay? Spanish, too. Uh, but you're also feeling a little bit more abstraction here, a little bit less distinction here, okay? And uh, as you go into more Eastern languages, it'll be less and less distinction here. So that's one way of thinking, subject, verb, object. I have a phone here. Let's say that's a subject, okay? And let's say the object is this button, all right? This phone has a white button, subject, verb, object has. Uh, let's see if we can get to some alternative ways of thinking. And so I'm going to show you with this illustration that the way we think in Western languages subject verb object is not necessarily the only way to think and perhaps it is a very restricted way to think and think of it in terms of that interstate highway I said in the previous lecture. These stru this structure of languages is like an interstate highway. It's very efficient for what it does. It gets you to where it's going really fast. But for some things, it can't do, it can't do some things. All right, so I'm going to go to this section of the board here and show you an example. And you got to feel through this. It's, it's, it's not going to be in language. It's going to be a, an evocation, almost like poetry. 
of how this feels, right? Okay? So I'm going to move from this concept here. All right? So what did I do? Metal, plastic, oil. Think of that concept. Let's move toward the concept of a chassis. Okay, let's move toward the concept of a car. All right, let's uncover it more and move toward the concept of a highway. Let's add a couple of verbs in here of action. Let's move toward a verb fast. Let's move toward another noun verb combo crash. All right, and let's move toward another verb burn. All right. So we moved from, God, I can't read backwards. Metal, plastic, oil, chassis, car, highway, fast, crash, burn. You probably have an image in your mind of what this is evoking, right? It's probably an image in your mind here. And probably you see a picture in your mind. You might feel some sensations in your mind based on me kind of building up this concept with this little evocation, poetic evocation. So Eastern languages are going to feel kind of like this evocation I gave you here. I didn't put it into subject verb object form. I put it into poetic evocation form. And you're going to see ancient languages and Eastern languages more structured that way or a structure going towards that way. I mean, every language has been influenced by the West, subject, verb, object. So you're going to be able to probably assemble something in most languages, subject, verb, object, but you're going to see it easier to evoke tones, evoke moods, evoke poetry in some other languages. The biggest example is, is Russian. Um, the other example uh, is Greek. And of course, the ancient language, Latin. Of course, there's ancient Greek and ancient Latin. But Greek is still spoken. And uh, Russian is uh, very much similar as far as the evocation and different uh, declensions is to Latin and Greek than it is to say Western languages of English, French, and Spanish. So just this little illustration and the motion I took you in your brain hopefully illustrated that the subject verb object methodology of speaking and putting grammar on the paper in English or French or Spanish is not the only way to think. It's very narrow. It's a Western style of thinking. It takes you to a certain direction. And you'll notice those countries who speak English, French, German, Spanish, the technology they developed, think about it, subject, verb, object, analysis, breaks things from the big, breaks it down to pieces, to smaller, smaller pieces, what's the actions that the separate pieces do to each other, subject, verb, object, whereas the Russians, they think differently because they have more of an evocation style. They can still do this, subject, verb, object. The language is more structured to evocation, more or less. And that's the word I'm using here. Uh, those of you who know the language better than I do might be able to use uh, better terminology. But, uh, Russian, say Greek and Latin, kind of have that evocation, mood, uh, sense, tone of, of the language than, it, than, than Western languages, which are very materialistic, like subject for objects that have a material. I want to break it down and see what it does. Okay? And that's why, say, technology might have first developed among the English, French, Germans, Spaniards, maybe because of this structure of thinking analysis. And those of you who want to get more into this, you might want to study the uh, philosopher Thomas Aquinas. In my opinion, is that he's the one who influenced the Western languages by his philosophy which is Aristotelian, Aristotle, uh, which is very much based on this style of directional thinking, subject, verb, object. Aristotelian, then Thomas Aquinas developed it further, and then it became the official uh, philosophy of the West uh, through the Catholic Church, Thomas Aquinas. 
and all of us Westerners think kind of sort of like that, subject verb object. We're very materialistic oriented, whereas our Eastern brothers and cousins are more evocative, more poetic, more mood, tone, base language, and thinking. So there you go. Um, appreciate you watching. Let's close this out, and uh, we'll, we'll do more later. Thanks. Take care. Bye.